Hi guys, so today we're going to talk about the sine law, <clears throat> which we uh, discovered in class. Um, but I want to show you an applet uh, again, just to make sure that we know what we're talking about here, and the reason why it works. Um, so if we look at this, this is just a regular triangle, right? Not, a, not necessarily a right angle triangle, right? And as I move any of the points, um, the sides and the angles change, okay? Now, the one thing here that you should notice is that ratio A, ratio B, and ratio C, while it does change, they stay the same as each other, okay? So what that tells us is that within a triangle, the ratio of sine A over the length of A is equal to the ratio of sine B over the length of B, and that's equal to the ratio of sine C over the length of C. That's how I've created these, ra these ratios, right? So this is sine A over A, this is sine B over B, and sine C over C. And they're always equal to each other, okay? Right? So they always stay the same. So what that helps us do is that lets us <clears throat> state this uh, fact, which we call the sine law. And what it is is that we can do the ratio of A over sine A, and set it equal to the ratio of B over sine B, and set that equal to the ratio of C over sine C. Okay? So this is one version of the sine law. Okay? Now you guys know that with fractions, um, we can also, uh, if I flip one of the fractions, the equation stays the same as long as I flip all the other fractions. Right? So here's another version of the sine law, which we want to know, okay? So all you have to remember is that the ratio of the side and sine of the opposite angle is equal throughout the triangle, okay? So A over sine B is, sine A is B over sine B is C over sine C, okay? So let's put that to use uh, to figure out the length of side X, okay? So the first thing we want to do here is we want to label this triangle. Okay, so let's call it A, B, C. Okay, and then this side would be called B, this side would be called C, and this side would be called little a. Okay, so that means um, notice that we need this side, but we have a ratio, right? So we can set up that C over sine. C is equal to A over sine A, okay? Notice that I'm not talking about B at all because it's not part of the problem, okay? So now let's fill in what I know. C over sine C is 20 over sine 50, and that's equal to A over sine A, so X over sine 60. Okay, so now all I have to do is isolate x, so I'll multiply across by sine 60, so that'll be 20 times sine 60 over sine 50, and that's equal to x. Okay, so for that, I just pull out my trusty calculator, and I say 20 times sine 60, so that'll be 60 sine equals, okay, so that's 20 times sine 60, and then I do divide it by sine 50, so 50 sine, okay, so 22.61, so x is 22.61, okay, and was there units, yes, centimeters, okay, so that's the length of x, okay, so let's look at another example. So it says given triangle PQR with angle P is 47. So what I want to do first is I want to draw a triangle. Okay. So here's a triangle. Okay. And I want to label it. Okay. So here's PQR. And it doesn't matter if it's the scale. Okay. Just draw a triangle and label it. All right. So angle P is 47 degrees. So this is 47 degrees. Okay. Side P is 78 degrees, so we know that that one goes across of angle P, so 78 centimeters. 
right? Side Q is 106. And we want to find the measure of Q and then side R, okay? So the measure of angle Q is the unknown, okay? So let's set up our ratio. So this time I want to put sine Q on top because it's the angle that I don't know. Okay, so sine Q over Q is equal to sine, and I want to use P because that's the ratio that I know. Okay, so sine Q, I don't know. Um, Q is 106. Sine P, so this will be sine 47 over 78. Okay, so again, I want to isolate for sine Q. So I'm going to multiply over. So I get sine Q is equal to 106 times sine 47 over 78. Okay, so again, I turn to my calculator. <clears throat> and I calculate that first. Okay, so that's 106 times sine 47 equals, and then divided by 78. Okay, so there's that. And now to find out what the measure of Q is, remember, so I know that sine Q is 0 0.994, okay? So sine Q is 0 0.994. Four. Okay, so you want to keep more than two decimal places. So that means the Q we're going to find by doing sine inverse. Okay, so now we just do uh, inverse sine, and there it is, 83.66. Okay, so 83.66 degrees. So keep three decimal places in the ratio, and then two decimal places in the actual angle. Okay, so that's part of the question was angle Q. Okay, and now we want to find the length of side R. Okay, so here's side R. Okay, well, to find side R, we need the opposite angle. Okay, so that's problematic because we don't know it, but we do know that Q is 83.66. Okay, so maybe we can find R. Okay, so we know that R is actually going to be 180 minus 49 minus 83.66, right? So that's 47.34. Okay, so this is going to be 47.34. Okay, and now we can find R by setting up a ratio. Okay, so we can say R over sine R, and R is... 47.34 is equal to our original ratio, which was 40, 78 over sine 47. So 78 over sine 47, right? So 78 over sine 47 is equal to R over sine 47.34, okay? So uh, now all we have to do is solve for R. So R is equal to cross multiply, solve, and come to class with what the answer is. Okay, all right, I'll see you guys in class.